Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Verse a Day Keeps Islam Away. I know this has been longly due, so let's go ahead and get started. Today I'd like to talk about a jihad, jihad, fighting in the cause of Allah. A jihad bi sabilillah. Um, <clears throat> that does exist in Islam, and <clears throat> whether they want to admit it or not, it, it is there, and it's written in black and white, or whatever colors they see. <clears throat> um, first, I'd like to take a look at how the jihad is represented, or how it's narrated in al-hadith, al-hadith. Particularly, I'm going to take a look at hadith al-Bukhari. Now, hadith al-Bukhari is considered to be sahih al-Bukhari because it is correct. And if you personally have a problem with sahih al-Bukhari, you can go to Jama' al-Azhar and talk to any of the fuqaha in Cairo and deal with them over there. In the meantime, however, I'm going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> the first thing I want to look at is book number two, hadith number 25. <clears throat> Abu Hurairah had narrated, Allah's apostle was asked, what is the best deed, he replied, to believe in Allah and his apostle, Muhammad. The questioner then asked, what is the next in goodness? And Muhammad replied, to participate in jihad, religious fighting in Allah's cause. The questioner again asked, what is the next in goodness? And Muhammad replied, to perform hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. So, when asked about what is the very best thing to do, number one, believe in Allah and his prophet. Number two, to fight in the, for the cause of Allah, and number three, to perform, to perform al hajj. We see this occurring again in book number 26, hadith number 594, where again, it's the same thing as narrated over and over, and also in book number 10, hadith number 505, except this time the order is a little bit out of whack, where it says the first thing is to offer the prayers and <clears throat> to offer the prayers, and the next thing, goodness, is to be good to your parents, and the third thing, goodness, is to participate in the jihad. Now, <clears throat> now I wanted to go ahead and take a look at something that Muhammad said that was kind of a little bit troubling and disturbing. <clears throat> hadith al-Bukhari, book number two, hadith number 35, narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, I would have loved to be martyred in Allah's cause and then made alive again and then martyred, and then made alive, and then again martyred in his cause. So not only did Muhammad want to be killed in the name of Allah, fighting for the sake of Allah, in the cause of Allah, waging a jihad, but no, he wanted to be killed, brought back to life, killed again, brought back to life, killed again, brought back to life, ever and ever and ever. Or it doesn't really go on, does it only three times. Um, now, you might wonder, how about women? Can women perform a jihad? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, narrated that Aisha in book number 29, hadith number 84, when she said, Oh, Allah's apostle, shouldn't we participate in holy battles and jihad along with you? And he replied, The best and the most superior jihad for women is al-hajj, which is accepted by Allah. And this again is repeated in, <clears throat> in book number 52, hadith number 127, where again they read it, Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, having said, I requested the Prophet to permit me to participate in jihad, but he said, your jihad is the performance of hajj. So, so here we do see a little bit of inequality where men can go and fight in the sake of Allah and women can stay behind and perform a hajj. Now, how you want to view this, it's up to you. I, c I could care less, but I just want to show that there was a little bit of inequality. Uh, the last thing I want to show is <clears throat> what is the reward for jihad or what is worth at fighting in jihad? Again, narrated Abu Huraira. Book number 52, hadith number 44. A man came to Allah's apostle and said, Instruct me as to such a deed that equals jihad in reward. The Prophet Muhammad replied, I do not find such a deed. 
For as the Mujahid, i.e. the Muslim fighter, is rewarded even for the footsteps of his horse while it wanders about for gazing tied in a long rope. So, not only does the Mujahid, and Mujahid is a person fighting a, a jihad, waging a jihad, not is he only rewarded for doing the actual fight himself, but no, he's also rewarded for the footsteps that his horses take just barely grazing around eating the grass. Now, what if you're a pacifist? What if you don't want to fight? What does the Quran have to say about all this? Because you know what? Al-Hadith, some people want to say, you know, Al-Hadith is not really the word of God. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the Quran. I'd like to bring your attention to Surah Al-Baqarah. That's the Quran number 2, book 2, verse number 216. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ This is very disturbing. It says, fighting is written upon you. So whether you like it or not, you must fight. And, and many a times, you might like something that is bad for you and you might dislike something which is good for you the only person that knows the difference is Allah and you do not know so in this a it's saying that Allah knows what's good for you and you do not know what's good for you so if you decide that you're a pacifist and you do not want to fight I'm sorry <laughs> fighting is written is inscribed upon you and Allah knows best. That's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.